So we have just finished setting up our chronograph and our target downrange. Here's the Pro Chrono DLX, which has threads in the bottom to screw in camera tripods. And this is just a cheap tripod off of Amazon Basics. So here's our setup, shooting at about 50 yards. We're not super concerned with group sizes because again, I've shot 55 grain FMJ out of my rifle and I kind of know what to expect. And I'm also more so concerned with velocity today, especially considering we're only shooting three shot groups. Here is the rifle we're gonna be testing this ammunition out of, which is a 16 inch, one and eight twist barrel. Uh, this is my AR that I use for more so close to medium range drills and training. So anything from 10 to about 200 yards, wherever I can push it with the EOTech uh, optic. 16 inch barrel, one and eight twist. Here's our ammunition that we've loaded these past three days. We also brought one round to just use to make sure that the chronograph is uh, displaying the correct number. So I know the velocity of this load, which is about 2800 FPS. So let's get our magazine loaded up and we can begin the test firing. So here's our assortment here. This is the uh, round to just make sure the chronograph's in the right ballpark. Just good to have one or two rounds to just make sure the chronograph is reading correctly. Overcast day, so you do not put the shaders on and around, like I said, 10 to 15 feet away from the muzzle. So it should be reading correctly. Here's our magazine and uh, pencil and paper or a pen and paper just to write down the velocities we get. So I'm gonna load all the rounds here in the magazine, starting with the top velocity first, because if you know how a magazine loads, if you whatever you load first ends up being at the bottom. So we're gonna want our lightest loads to be at the top of the magazine. So we're gonna load our lightest loads last and just kind of go in cascading or descending order loading this magazine so that we can do three rounds at each uh, powder charge, giving us a string of three velocities per charge, which we'll write down and then we'll look at later. So let's get this magazine loaded up. Here we are loading and making ready. Ready to fire here. So here's our first round. It is that cider round. It's not cider, uh, that first round, just to make sure that we're calibrated correctly. We're at 27. I can read that correctly. 27.75. So there's that first round going down range. Now here comes the first powder charge. So here is the first powder charge. This is the velocities for the 23.6 grains. First rung of the ladder. So we're gonna take our shots down range here. We're at 27.19. The Pro Chrono stores those, so I'm just gonna shoot this string or shoot all the strings and then write them down later as they'll be stored in the chronograph. 2719. 2761. 2725. So we're at 2725 FPS for that first run. So here comes 23.9. 2772. 2757. 2747. Here comes the 24.2. Going up to 2834. 2798. 2832. So now we're at the 24.5. So we've gone up. This is the fourth rung of the ladder, 24.5. 2850. Two errors to read there, so well, that's frustrating, but hmm. let's see what happens. We're at 24.8 now. Let's see what we get. 
thousand uh twenty nine fifty five twenty eight ninety seven So there are some issues, there are some imperfections with the optical chronographs. They don't always get a good reading, sadly. You can get some errors, but uh, we've been able to read most of the rounds, so we kind of know where we're shooting at. So if I check my magazine here, we have one in the chamber, and we have five rounds left, which means we are at the second to last rung. So this is 25.1 grains of powder. 29.72. struggling now to read these. Hopefully it reads this last ladder here because I kind of need this data. You know, this is a little frustrating, but you guys get to see the imperfections of the process. Here's the 25.4, the hottest load. 3,029. 29.48. Of course, the pro chrono finishes it off with errors to read. So let's go check out our brass and look at our data. So I went through and wrote down all the velocities from our testing here. And this is the first round I fired just to make sure the chrono's in the correct ballpark. And uh, we got 2715, which is to be round expected. Granted, I had wrote down 2800 for that ammunition and that load, but I did test it on a bit of a hotter day of the year. Uh, today it's a little cooler. So that would make sense that we got a slightly less velocity. And granted, that's 2800 average. So you're going to have some 2750s in there. So that makes that makes sense. We're in the ballpark. But besides that, here we are. We're going to see each of our primers here, which do not show any signs of overpressure. But again, to really know if you overpressure or not, you want to look at your velocity data, which we have here written down. First rung of the ladder, we had this. If we work our way up all the way here. This is the area I want to show you guys that optical chronographs are not perfect. They are more affordable than radar-based chronographs, but sadly they are not without their issues. Thankfully, we were able to somewhat, we were able to get uh, a, at least half of the numbers around this area. So like I was saying, I'm looking to clone M193, uh, which is pretty much the uh, Lake City stuff that you'd buy in 55 grain. So pretty much the military mil spec M193 which out of a 16 inch barrel tends to get you around 3050 average FPS. So 3029 and 2948 were pretty much there. This is definitely the powder charge I'm going to be uh, loading for or close to. I'll do some more specific investigation, but basically if you're in your load development at this point and you were me trying to clone this, I'd probably load up, uh, probably calculate the average of these two numbers, which probably lands us around 3000, just slightly less. Now, I'd probably end up loading at probably 25.4. The reason why I say that is because it's a little bit of a cooler day today. So on a hotter day, we definitely get slightly hotter than this, which would probably push us a little over. Granted, that wouldn't be a risk of overpressure on those hotter days, excuse me. But uh, nonetheless, this is a powder charge I'm going to investigate, probably load some more rounds at, chrono them again. Uh, probably like five or ten more rounds at this power charge chrono them and if I like it if it gets me close to that average load them up and that's my load uh, so that'll be the end of my load development so this is the load development process you guys got to join me from all the way from picking up brass off the floor at the range to tumbling it resizing it and loading it and that is the process of loading ammunition and chronoing it and testing it and that is a load development I hope you guys enjoyed this process with me and I hope you guys learned a lot. If you have any questions about this process, please let me know. And like I said here, not proud of this, not proud of the Pro Chrono. I've never had it be that uh, unreliable, I should say, giving me so many error readings. I usually only get one error reading out of about 20 rounds, but we have one, two, three, four, five, six error readings out of 21 rounds, which is not the best. But I will think next time I will slow down my firing just to give the Chrono time to uh, reset the software and sensors maybe that's why we had those issues but load development success our primers and our head stamps look good no signs of overpressure so i would say this is a success with this powder bullet and primer combination those are our velocities they look good so 
we'll start loading from here keep making ammo and keep training hope you guys enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more